Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Sean Penn, Nicole Bayer, and music from Megan Maroney with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! The world is a mess. The country is a mess. Some of you are a mess, I see here. But you know what? We're trying to clean it up. We still don't have the Speaker of the House, which means nothing can get done in this country, even less nothing than the usual nothing that gets done in this country. Republicans took a break from fake impeaching Joe Biden to nominate Steve Scalise of Louisiana to be their next speaker. Scalise beat out Jim Jordan in a closed-door session, and now we'll spend a night in the fantasy suite with Matt Gates to see how, it, <laughs> how they hit it off. The House majority chose Scalise by a vote of 113 to 99. It's still unclear, though, if he has enough votes to win the speakership, because that would require Republicans to accept the results of an election. That's really not their thing, you know? It's, especially Steve Scalise, who still is denying that Biden won the election. He's an interesting person, this Steve Scalise. He was one of the biggest gun supporters in Congress, but then in 2017, remember, he was shot and seriously wounded at a congressional baseball game by a man carrying a legally purchased assault rifle. And when he recovered, he came back to Congress, he knew that nothing like what happened to him should ever happen again. So as his first act, he introduced House Resolution 2481 that required all baseball players to carry AK-47s <laughs> in their protective cups. And, um, it's an inspiring story. They'll make a movie about it one day. So next, probably tomorrow, Scalise's nomination goes to the House floor. So if you see white smoke coming from the <laughs> Capitol Rotunda, it means they've either picked a new speaker or Lauren Boebert is vaping again. <laughs> Speaking of smoke, the first U.S. state to allow sales of medical marijuana at regular pharmacies will be Georgia, of all places. Sorry, Colorado, you're asleep at the wheel. It's Georgia. <laughs> Starting soon, uh, drugstore shoppers in Georgia will be able to buy their fiber gummies and their weed gummies at the very same place. And if you thought the line at the pharmacy window was slow before, wait till... <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting to see uh, something that has been illegal for most of our lives, has been taboo, suddenly available like Walgreens, but even though it isn't on the shelves quite yet, uh, one local shop in Georgia is ready to go. At Top Health Pharmacy, we cared for your family for more than 55 years. From head colds to skin knees, we've been there. And now, for the first time, we carry all the weed you can eat. So stop by and try our new selection of cannabis products. Then wander mindlessly through our aisles. Maybe pick up a five-pound bag of Reese's peanut butter cups and eat them all in your car. Ooh, look at those cotton balls. And what's that thing? Is that a decoration or... Whoa. Why is that cashier staring at me? You think he's a cop? I gotta get out of here, man. It is way too bright. I need some air, like, right now. Top Health Pharmacy. It's scary in here. <laughs> well, here's some more good news for those who partake. We've got one less password to scribble down and forget where we put it. Google yesterday announced that effective immediately, entering a password will no longer be their default way to sign in. Passwords will be replaced with pass keys. It's easy for people to lose a password, so Google decided to replace them with something we never lose, keys. <laughs> Google is also amping up security on the I'm not a robot checkbox. From now on, you know this thing, it'll be a three-part system, starting with the usual I'm not a robot. You check that and you get, I'm really not a robot. And if you click that, you're on to, I swear I'm not a robot. Please, just let me watch some porn before my wife gets back from her book club. Here's a fun game. 
This is a game that's for our studio audience, but you can play it at home, too. I'll put up a headline. You try to figure out in what state it took place, okay? The story. Here we go. Sausage flinging racist arrested for attack on gas station attendant. Can you guess the state? Florida! <laughs> it's almost as if we rehearsed that, but it... <laughs> that's right, it's... No state does racist sausage flinging like Florida. They call that a Broward County brunch, in fact, but <laughs> what makes um, it that especially remarkable is that the following story did not take place in Florida. Rather, it happened in Michigan. The individual was found to be naked in his car, uh, pleasuring himself in the parking lot. Not one, not two, but three different men doing the same creepy thing in one week, all in Dearborn Heights. One caught on camera. What the f is he doing? Harold Pedler and his pup butt kiss walking in Hines Park, where one of the three men was caught in his car, door open, naked, masturbating on Monday. Sounds like one of those quote TikTok challenges. Harold, with this stroke of genius, investigators are actually looking into his theory that some kind of online forum is encouraging guys to pleasure themselves, specifically in Dearborn Heights. One of the three has been arrested, a block from Annapolis High School last week, caught with meth and a cucumber. <laughs> what a TikTok challenge. How do we go in less than 10 years from the ice bucket challenge to the masturbate with meth in front of the playground challenge? It's... And I'll tell you something. It's such a crazy story, you almost forget the guy has a pup named Buttkiss. <laughs> you know, sometimes I learn things from doing this show, and today I learned that apparently I've been washing my jeans the wrong way. According to the CEO of Levi's, we should not be putting our jeans in the washing machine. We should instead wear them into the shower. Um, for real, he said this. You wear, you're supposed to wash your jeans in the shower. I barely even wash my legs in the shower without <laughs> the, the idea is that cleaning your jeans while you shower is good for the environment because he uses less water than throw them in the, in the laundry. I don't think he's thought this through. Have you ever tried to take a pair of wet jeans off? <laughs> David Blaine couldn't get out of a pair of wet 501s. Guillermo, have you ever heard of anything like this? No, nothing like that. You have not? Okay. <laughs> Just checking to see if you're awake every once in a while. <laughs> Speaking of bad genes, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is trying to Huckabee S her way out of her first big scandal as governor of Arkansas. And as far as scandals go, this one is a doozy. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders is facing a potential legislative audit over the purchase of this podium. According to online records with transparency.arkansas.gov, the amount owed to Beckett Events LLC was $19,029.25. I think the process just wasn't as clean as it should have been. Uh, again, it's been reimbursed by private funds. Uh, nothing was paid for by taxpayers, and that was the error on the front end. Sanders and her staff have been accused of spending um, more than $19,000 on the election. That's, this is a Class D felony in Arkansas to fudge public records. But if you remember seeing her playing fast loose with facts and she was press secretary for Trump, you know that fudging is Sarah's passion. She is, <laughs> some call her the Honorable Fudge Judy, in fact. Let's have another look at that lectern. It's, it is sexy, I have to give her that. Looks like $19,000 well spent. You could buy a town in Arkansas for $19,000. <laughs> you know who could use a press secretary like Sarah Huckabee Sanders? George Santos, who is now facing 23 criminal charges. Just to give that some perspective, the BTK killer only had 10 charges against him. <laughs> Santos has been indicted on charges of conspiracy, wire fraud, falsifying records, and the most Photoshop ever used <laughs> in a single headshot. He's, he just told him, keep airbrushing until I don't have a nose. When news of this latest round of indictments broke yesterday, Santos, who was in Congress, all of a sudden got his 10,000 steps in quick. Oh, Comment, I was, I did not have access to my phone. Prosecutor no, said you defrauded the American public. No will you resign? What you guys are talking about. No, I will not, excuse me. Only George Santos would say he had no access to his phone while he is on. <laughs> that very phone, but go on. They said that you stole people's identities. Did you steal people's identities? 
Did you give it identity card? Are you still going to vote in the voters? Well, what do you have to well, say you to your down? constituents? I will not. I have no comment. I was in conference like everyone else without my phone, so I have nothing to talk about. I need to take a look at what you're Did you commit? Why are you talking about the three basic questions? Identity card? Identity That is no. And now he's got an assault charge, too. This is <laughs> snowballing. Now, one of the more interesting charges that Santos is going to have to face is an allegation he charged his own donors' credit cards without their permission. Did you charge to your credit card donors money? Did you use their credit cards to reward yourself? That's the allegation. Uh, no. I will look at it. And why, should should be able to vote? why should you be able to vote in the speaker's election? Such a key election when you've been charged with all these crimes. <laughs> He slams that door a lot, which is funny, because I don't know if you noticed on his way in there, he's got a sign that says, yes, we're open. <laughs> Not anymore, I guess. So it's good he should get used to being in a confined space, because the prison walls are closing in. His former campaign treasurer pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit fraud, and his fellow Republican congresspeople in New York just introduced legislation to expel him. For obvious reasons, Santos has been dodging reporters, but we think we might have tracked him down. And um, he's, if we could, yes, there he is, Congressman Santos, is that you? Quien uh, Congressman Santos? That, yeah, that's you. No, 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 no. Me llamo uh, uh, Gloria Stefan. Okay, well that, <laughs> oh, Gloria, what's with the costume you're wearing? That is, the costume, it's not a costume. It happens to be National Hispanic Heritage Month. So thank you for being an insensitive white Diablo. I'm so, I'm insensitive. You're the one dressed like Speedy Gonzalez for no reason. Are you trying to flee the country? Is that what's going on here? Why would I try and flee the country when everything I've been accused of, I'm innocent of? All those crimes, I did not commit. Uh-huh. Where are you going then? I'm going down to Brazil to work on my charity. What charity are you working for? Dogs. Did you say dogs? Yeah, I've been working on dogs for many years, but you might not have heard about it because I'm not exactly out there tooting my own horn about it like a lot of people I know. Your charity is dogs. Can I okay. make a donation? I love dogs. Oh, uh, yeah, this seems just about right. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, now, hold on. Now it seems like you're doing a drug deal. What? That is absolutely outrageous. These are neck pillows for my friend Dale's upcoming vacation. <laughs> Who is Dale? I'm Dale. Oh, see hi, Dale. Oh, 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 oh Jesus. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> George, George, before you run off, why were you charged with identity theft? What was going on there? Oh, there was George. no identity theft at all, okay? My husband, Mateus, and I were going undercover as all American teenagers at Sagan High to infiltrate an illicit drug ring. Wait, wait, wait hold on, Sagan, isn't that the plot of 21 Jump Street? Wait, I, I don't even know what you're talking about, Jimmy. I've never heard about that before. <laughs> 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 Adios, amigo. Okay. It looks like I won this round, Jimmy. Okay, yeah. Well, he's, um, George. No, oh, Yeah. <laughs> George. Anyway, you said yesterday you're not planning on resigning despite all these new charges. Why wouldn't you just resign at this point? Because the people of New York or New Jersey or wherever I'm from, they deserve to have a voice. A voice that stands up for the Constitution and the rule of law. Yeah, but... There it the, is. Oh, uh, pardon me, uh, I have to get back to some important work with my constituents, okay? Okay, but I thought you were going to wait to Brazil to work on dogs, no? That's crazy. I'm in Washington, D.C. doing the people's work right uh, now. Well, it, it, does, it seems like, it actually seems like you're um, right here. <laughs> well, I'm not, Jimmy, I'm not. You know, I can literally, I can see myself behind you. Oh. Yeah. Look, it's George Santos, everybody. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. no. Now shut up! Everybody shut up, shut up! Shut up, everyone. If the feds come in here, nobody saw me, okay? This is not the congressman you are looking for. Was that a Jedi mind trick you just tried there? Yes, it was. Did it work? It did not work, no, it did All not. Right. I guess I'm gonna have to run then. Okay, well, George, you can't keep running. You can't run forever, George. We're gonna catch up to you eventually. <laughs> 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 You see, Jimmy, that's where you're wrong, because I'm always two steps ahead of you. You might have think that you had me cornered, but this was my plan all along. You see, my secret, Kimmel, that you don't know is that I thrive in chaos. Okay. Right. Um, why, uh, are you getting into a crate? No, no, that's not a crate. This is a sensory deprivation chamber. It's very peaceful for me. Okay. Vamanos, muchachos, andale!
<laughs> All right, well, I guess um, that's, and he's on his way to Brazil. I guess uh, charity work now. All right, our future former congressman, George Santos. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. I hope he's okay.